Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the CSRF module titled CSRF Vulnerability with No Defenses. All right, let's get started. This lab's email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. So our vulnerable parameter is the email change functionality. To solve the lab, craft some HTML that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address and upload it to your exploit server. So the goal over here is to exploit the CSRF vulnerability and change the email address of the victim user. You can log into your own account using the following credentials. So we've been given creds, so let's put them over here. And let's copy paste them. All right, let's access the lab. So right click and open it in a new tab. And while that loads, we'll open up Burp Suite Professional. So for the first part of this exercise, we'll solve it using a Burp Suite Professional. But if you don't have a professional version of Burp, don't worry, in the second part, we'll script it on our own. Okay, let's click next and start Burp. And let's make that a little bit smaller. Put it over here. And the first thing we're gonna do is log in with the credentials that we've been given. So we're gonna click on my account. And the password was Peter. Click login. And here we go. This is the email change functionality that the exercise tells us is vulnerable to CSRF. So let's go back to Burp and set the Foxy Proxy extension to send requests to Burp and try and change the email address. So test at test.ca and click update email. And that should have been intercepted in Burp and it did. So I'm gonna send this to repeater. Set intercept to be off. And you could see over here, the email was changed to test at test.ca. So let's go back to repeater and look at our request. Okay, so let's create an analysis section. So in order for a CSRF attack to be possible, we said you have to satisfy three conditions. And the three conditions were one, you have to have a relevant action. The second one was it had to be purely cookie based session handling. And the third condition was that there was no unpredictable request parameters. So to first determine if this is vulnerable to CSRF, it has to satisfy these three conditions. So let's go through the first condition. Is this a relevant action? In this case, what's happening is you're changing the email address of the victim user, so the user that you're phishing. And this is definitely relevant because if you can change the email address to one that you can control, then you could just reset the user's password and fully compromise the user's account. So this definitely checks off. So we're gonna say email change functionality. And so it's satisfied. The second condition is cookie-based session handling. So we could see over here, the way the applications handle sessions or track sessions amongst users is using this cookie over here that is called session. And this is the value of the cookie. So this checks off as well. So we'll say it's using a session cookie. And the last condition is there has to be no unpredictable request parameters. So since this is a vulnerability that requires you to fish a user with an already pre-made request that the user is going to execute on his or her side, you need to know all the parameters that are required for the request to go through. And in this case, there's only one parameter, which is the email address. 
And so there isn't any unpredictable request parameters. Now, if you had a random number that is added with every request, such as a CSRF token, this is no longer vulnerable because the attacker can't predict ahead of time what that random number is going to be for the request to pass. And if that random number is not there, the request is going to fail. And so uh, it's no longer vulnerable to CSRF. So in this case, we're going to say it's satisfied. So this is definitely vulnerable to CSRF. Now, if we want to exploit this using Burp Suite Professional, there's a really easy feature that automatically generates the CSRF script for you. So you right click, click on engagement tools, and then select generate CSRF POC. So we're going to click that and look at this script. So the first thing you want to do is click on options and select include auto submit script. Now what that's going to do, it's going to automatically submit the form instead of uh, you clicking on the submit button. So if you click on regenerate, you'll see over here it added this line, which automatically submits the form. Okay, so let's look at the HTML over here. And again, if you don't have Burp Suite Professional, don't worry about it. We'll solve this manually in the second part of the video. Okay, so you've got the HTML element, the body element, script element, and then the form element. This is where this is important because this post request is done using a form element. You could see over here, this is the URL of changing the email address, which is done over here. It's also a post uh, request, so a post method is used, and that's already specified over here. Next, you have to give it all the input vectors in the request, which in this case is the email address of the user. And you can see it over here. It's test at test.ca. And then there is a submit button for you to submit the request. And again, we added the auto submit so that it's automatically submitted for us. Now, in order to test that this works, let's say test1 at test.ca. And then we're going to copy HTML go back to the server and click on. So let's right click this and open it in a new tab. So the exploit server. Now the way CSRF works is that you've got a script, you host it on your own website. And then when the user clicks on your sites and visits the link, the script executes in the browser of the user. The user of course has to be logged in or this won't work. But if the user is logged in, it'll perform this action for us. Now to complete the exercise, we can't host it on our own server. We'd have to do it through the exploit server that is provided for us. So we're just assuming over here that the exploit server is hosting the script for us. So in the body section, paste your script, go down and hit deliver exploit to victim. Okay, and here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. If we go back to the exercise, it should have changed the email address to test1 at test.ca. And it did not. So we might have did something wrong over here. So everything does look correct. So I'm going to reload this again. Let's change this to test2. Again, copy HTML, go to the exploit server, put it in here. Let's store the exploit first. And then go down and deliver the exploit to the victim. Okay, let's reload this and see if it changed. And it didn't. So I'm going to try one more thing. So I'm just going to click on test in browser. What that does is it hosts it on Burp Suite. And so we don't have to go through the exploit server. I'm going to copy this. It should submit on its own. And here we go. It changed the email address. Now, this is working. I'm not sure why the exploit server that Burp is using doesn't allow it to change the email address. So there might be something wrong with the exploit server. We're going to try one more thing by clicking on view exploit and see if that might change things. Now, of course, we already changed it to two. So to test this, we're going to click on three, copy HTML, 
go to the exploit server go down and click on view exploit and see if it changes it to test three and it did so maybe i was clicking the wrong thing i had to say view the exploit instead of deliver exploit to victim so what this is mimicking is you sending a link to the user that contains the script over here, the user clicking it while the user is logged into the application. And so this performs uh, the request on behalf of the user and changes the email of the user. So this completes the first part of the video. What we're going to do next is uh, script this exploit on our own and then host it on our own server and then mimic clicking the link that the uh, attacker has sent us. And then you'll see that the victim sees a normal page that says hello world while the attacker in the background had changed the email address of the user. So it's a little bit more realistic when we're doing it on our own versus uh, when we're doing it using the CSRF POC generator, um, especially if it's the first time that you've encountered CSRF uh, vulnerabilities. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability using Burp Suite Pro and manually using the Community Edition, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the share and subscribe button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.